Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at a scenario where Colombia makes an empire. So I've been doing a lot of these and today the lucky country is Colombia. So it's going to begin with of course Colombia declaring war on Panama and they quickly push up and capture Panama City, the Panama Canal, and very very quickly Panama surrenders. For Colombia this is quite an easy war and although in real life they would face a lot of international backlash, probably some sanctions, maybe even some diplomatic cuts for taking control of the Panama Canal. Some people actually like it because now they allow warships, probably their own, but let's go ahead and continue this as they go ahead and declare war on Ecuador. Once again, not the strongest country by any means, and Colombian troops are kind of just, they're just kind of gonna walk in along the coastline. Quito's captured. All of their important land is captured, everything that's not in the Andes mountain range. And soon enough, well, yeah, Ecuador. Uh, Ecuador, Ecuador, Ecuador. Nothing I can really say to you. There's nothing you can do at all. There's literally nothing you can do. Colombia is not really seen as a global power here, but hey, they're making their way up there. They're growing in strength, they're growing in influence. As I said, taking over the Panama Canal has given them a lot of influence over, the glo over global politics, as it is not just not not just a, a U.S. kind of. Well, no, actually, there are rules in place though for it. But yeah, here we have our Colombian Empire, very very powerful already. Well, it's only going to grow in strength as they declare war on Costa Rica, and yeah. There's no more Costa Rica. Once again, the U.S. sees this as something terrible, and U.S.-Colombian relations absolutely plummet, leading to Colombia deciding, okay, what would the U.S. like me to do? That's on my border. Hmm, look at that. Venezuela still exists. Let's change that. And that's exactly what's about to happen. As Colombia declares war in Venezuela. This is not going to be a very difficult war, and Colombia basically says, USA, if you're watching this, I'm, beat I'm beating up Venezuela for you. With that, Colombian troops quickly begin to push in. They mainly focus around the coast, but eventually all of Venezuela falls. This is a very corrupt and very destabilized Venezuela, and this is a surprisingly centralized and powerful Colombia. In this video, we're probably going to have to buff them and maybe change a few things about global politics to allow them to make this empire without any international organization or any alliance period to take them down. But hey, Colombia, I've made, I'm going to make empires for almost every country at one point. Today is yours. We're going to allow you to expand a lot. So yeah. Now with Venezuela gone, where are they going to go next? Well, look at that. There are two conveniently weak countries right on their border. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. What con two conveniently weak countries on their border? I'm pretty sure it's all just Colombia now. Of course, this sees a lot less international backlash. And uh, this would actually be difficult to take control of because of the language difference. But the Europeans did it. The Colombians can too. After taking that down, they go ahead and say, random small Caribbean islands. What random small Caribbean islands? They're all just Colombia now. And we now see the world finally recognizing them as a minor power. About with the same influences, I don't know, like Iran maybe? Sa no, not Saudi Arabia. They have too much oil. They can change anything they want. Maybe somewhere along the lines of Vietnam or maybe Mexico maybe South Africa, something like that. So yeah, they've gotten themselves a decent amount of global influence. That's only gonna expand. They say, USA, I also took down Nicaragua for you after a definitely not staged coup against your government. And then you say, it's like, oh, okay, I forgive you. And then Colombia's like, okay, well, you're mine, you're mine, and you're mine. And then the USA is like, can you stop doing that? And then Colombia's going to say something like, no. And of course, this hurts their relations, but Colombia knows that as long as they can keep the USA on their side, they can expand however they want. 
So they actually take the US's advice and stop. They only take over one more country. And this is a very difficult one, but Jamaica, it's a small, weak country, and it will really help Colombia keep their area. From there, they want Puerto Rico. Sad thing for them, Puerto Rico's American. So they do a little thing, and this ends up happening, and then they're like, okay, USA, give me Puerto Rico, I give you Cuba. Fair deal? Well, actually, it's a terrible deal for the Colombians, but they don't really have a choice here, and the deal's eventually made. If you're wondering why they did this, it's because a little something called rebellion is happening in Cuba, and they'd rather consolidate their fronts. With that, Colombia now has a stronghold over the Caribbean Sea, and now they can just go wherever they want to go, and where they want to go is to Peru. With that, Colombian troops begin to push along the coast. Of course, the Andes Mountains, if you didn't know, are holding them off from pushing inland. But with the fall of Lima and a lot of the most important areas in Peru, even Colombian push into the rainforests leads to Peru surrendering. Also, if you hear a dog barking, yeah, <clears throat> I guess it happens. Well, let's go and join these new borders as Peru. Yeah, you were just, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Well, Colombia is going to allow them to continue to exist as a semi-sovereign state, but by that I mean they're Colombia's puppet now. They just say that on a world stage to make themselves look better. They also say that they are just, and I quote, uniting the Spanish peoples, which I guess makes sense. They all speak Spanish, but that doesn't mean they're exactly perfectly alike, and there's still going to be some issues holding down this area. With that, though, Colombia is now seen as a eh, semi-influential global power. Now, instead of being along the likes of Mexico or Vietnam, they are now along the likes of places like Egypt, or maybe like maybe even up to like Poland, or some of the Nordic countries. So yeah, it, their influence is growing on a global stage, but it's still not where they want it to be. And then they look south, and they're like, hmm, Brazil still exists. Hmm, Brazil is a very powerful and influential global country. Hmm, hey Bolivia, do you want the rest of Peru? Bolivia, of course, says yes. And then something happens like this. Hey Argentina, you want Paraguay? Uh, yes. Hey Argentina, you want Uruguay? And Colombia is basically invading these countries for them, and a new alliance forms between Colombia, Argentina, and Bolivia. Now with this alliance, all three of these newfound allies join together to defeat the regional power in a war that was justified through saying that Brazil was a threat on their border, that they are too powerful, and that this is no different from a few rebellions that have happened in the past, or a few wars. Basically, they're trying to say, hey, these guys, they're threatening me, they're on my border and they're too strong, we're gonna go and kill them. And that's going to go surprisingly well. As once war is declared, Brazil, who saw themselves as, well, as they are, a very powerful global country, did not expect this in the slightest. They never thought that Colombia would dare declare war on them, since they thought they could beat them. But now with this triple alliance, oh, the triple alliance, would you look at that? <laughs> Which one's going to betray them now? No, but the point is, with this new alliance between Bolivia, Argentina, and Colombia, they may not be able to win. Of course, right here, there's something called the Amazon Rainforest. So yeah, that's gone with the day. Our options here are Colombian troops die and Brazil loses almost nothing in the jungles, but you gain a bit of land and it looks clean on a map, or start pushing out from Argentina and Colombia and their group are gonna do both. With this, Brazil actually had a good amount of troops stationed in the north of the country to defend from Colombia, as I said, they didn't really expect this, but they knew that there was a chance that this new expansionist Colombia would declare war on them. What they didn't see was the rapid formation of this alliance and how Argentina and Bolivia are pushing into their country. They quickly pull out of the Amazon. It's, I mean, some resources, meh, meh area, but it's not very populated. Brazil does not defend it, and all of northern Brazil falls. 
So yeah, this is about where the war starts after all the surprise attacks and invasions and whatnot. What's gonna happen here? Well, of course, the world says, Columbia, stop that. Columbia says, okay, give me a week. And the world says, okay, fine, you have a week. So Columbia says, okay, guys, send your army running at them. If we don't kill them in a week, then we lose. Six days pass, and this is what Brazil has left. They begin to push in on the last day, but it's not enough. And so surprisingly enough, they are forced to retreat their troops out of some parts of Brazil. And honestly, for Brazil, this isn't very important, but it means that they will not be puppeted. It means that they got out of the war soon enough to the point where they are still a completely independent nation and can do their own things, don't have to help Colombia and give them absurd amounts of resources whenever they ask for it. But they're still going to be punished as tech by a technicality, Colombia did still win the war. A lot of Northern Brazil goes to them along with a good portion of central Brazil going over to Bolivia and a lot of southern Brazil going over to Spain. I mean, to Argentina. Why did I say Spain there? I don't really know, but I meant to say Argentina. So yeah, let's just go ahead and finish coloring in these borders. And then this is what's left of Brazil. Now, of course, this isn't, wasn't what was left of Brazil at the end of the war. So although Brazil can't be pup completely puppeted, since the red team didn't completely win the war, a majority of Brazil was theirs, and they don't want an even semi-powerful country on their border, so they do a little thing called break the country you want to kill into two, and that should do it. So they do this. They divide Brazil up into two parts, southern Brazil and northern Brazil. I don't know what their exact names would be, but this is in an act to weaken the country. The northern half is puppeted, the southern half is its own independent country. Which half would do better, I cannot tell you because it would, both halves have fought a war and are completely dead. But let's go ahead and wrap up these video, this video with the last few events happening. First, let's finish drawing these borders. So yeah, Colombia's made themselves quite a formidable empire. With the fall of Brazil, they take their place as the Latin American superpower, and with their alliance with Bolivia and Argentina, I still don't think these three could stand up to the United States of America, but maybe with their Brazilian puppet, they can attempt. Yeah, the USA is too powerful. There's no way even all three of these combined could rival them, but they're gonna try. They're gonna grow their global influence, and with all three of these combined, they are passing up the influence of countries like France, countries like the United Kingdom, and Colombia on its own has about the same influence, I want to say, as some of these European countries. Maybe not to the level of France, the UK, and Germany, but Spain and Italy, yeah. From there, they decide to take a huge chunk out of their economy in favor of land and buy French Guiana. The people there were already getting, starting to get sick of being under French rule. And Colombia basically says, France, I think you have a rebellion on your hand. Can we take it off of you? And France, of course, says yes. With that, Colombia now has French Guiana. And from there, there's not much more land for them to take. Let's go ahead and give them what they have left. And we can look at these final borders. From here, Colombia is basically going to say, you're mine and you're mine. As for you guys, well, you're a part of the US. Hey, USA, can I have Cuba? And the USA, who's already lost 20,000 men trying to hold down the area, says, yeah, sure. And now Colombia got Cuba back. The USA never expected it to be that difficult to hold down and just said, you know what? Make them be democratic, be democratic, and it's all yours. And Colombia says, okay, yeah, I'll be democratic. And by the end of this, they are now a US ally and a pretty dang influential country on the planet. With that, I do hope you guys enjoyed this absolutely massive empire, one of my largest expansions yet. Some of the other ones are probably France, maybe eh, Germany, sure. But yeah, this hasn't gained a lot of land. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.